All right, Jerry, I am Benji. How you doing? Nice to meet you, brother. Welcome to Taiwan. I watch your YouTube and I kind of got a feel for what you're doing. And I got your book and I read through most of it. And I basically have three questions which I think would be really important and valuable to, to my audience here in Taiwan. So the first question is on vibration. A lot of people don't understand vibration and they don't understand the functionality of vibration. They know what it is and why it's important. So could you explain a little bit on this vibration thing? Yeah, sure. I mean, vibration itself is what we are. We are music. All of us on this planet, brothers and sisters running around this, this crazy planet we call Earth, are all vibrating on different frequencies. And we're controlled by frequency. We're controlled by vibration. Our emotions, um, when certain things happen in our life, for example, someone comes into our space, they act a certain way, and we interpret what it is that they're saying to us or telling to us or sharing with us in a particular way. And the vibration of their words triggers emotional responses. The words that they say to us, we interpret them in a certain way and that triggers an emotional response because the mind and the body are intrinsically linked. So in that way you've got vibration. The functionality of vibration for me, from where I am at my life now, is, is, is to determine whether I'm in a good space or not. Mm -hmm. If I'm feeling down, I know that my vibration's gone low. Right. If, if I'm feeling negative, if I'm feeling um, jealous, if I'm feeling angry, then I know that something's triggered my vibrational scale and I need to recorrect or realign what is going on internally inside of me. So vibration for me is kind of like a tool to determine where I'm at in my space because for me I want to be vibrating really high all the time. If I'm vibrating really high then I can manifest quickly. You know for me when I'm going in to heal somebody I need to be on a really high vibration because that way I'm transmitting positive energy, high vibrational frequencies. What is the feeling of this high vibration? Like how would I explain to someone you want to be high vibration? Maybe they're not understanding it because they, they don't know how it would actually feel or how it would interpret to like their vibration in their life. Like. Well, everybody knows whether they're feeling good or bad. Okay. And good or bad are just words. Right. For me, everything's just an experience. There is no good or bad. But we can use the words good or bad in this context. Okay, if I'm feeling great, I'm feeling pumped. I'm like, hey, Benji, man, how you doing? I'm in a great space. How are you feeling today? And you're like, yeah, Jerry, I feel great. I feel ecstatic. You know, you're on a high vibration. You feel really good. Uh, you're pumped. You're open. You're expansive. Yes. Um, and if you're not feeling very good, then you go, oh, I feel dying, Benji. You know, life's pretty low. That's a lower vibration. Right. So you've got a high and a low vibration. That's one way of explaining it simply. That's a really good explain. I like that one. I think everybody can understand that. Uh, next is we're going to move this forward into like, in a Chinese context, they have a word called yuanfen. Translate roughly as destiny. Uh, how do you see destiny as an energy worker? I feel that every single human being on this planet has a life purpose, okay? My life's been very unique. Um, I was fostered, adopted as a child. I turned to drink and drugs at a young age. My life spiraled out of control. I ended up working for a high profile criminal organization um, in my late teenage years. For, for, for seven or eight years I was working. Uh, for this organization so I was smuggling drugs, I was smuggling guns, I was on a completely different path in my life <clears throat> but my mission here on this planet is to share star magic it's to, it's, it's to travel the world, train people to use this energy healing modality and help people pull, pull, live from a, from a space of unconditional love and compassion this is my purpose but I was on a completely different path. Now the universe is always trying to take you from where you are towards your purpose. Everybody's got one, or a destiny, whatever you want to call it. But you've got to listen. For me, I was focused on money. I was focused on fast cars, nice clothes, all of these things um, that I felt would make me more powerful. But I lost everything. And I went back to zero and beyond. You know, I was down in the gutter, and then I had a number of experiences in my life. There was a car crash, various other instances, and it took me 
into healing. I didn't used to believe in any of this stuff. I thought it was all rubbish. But the universe had a plan. I had a destiny, I had a purpose, whatever you want to call it. And I feel that every single human being's got one. Special gifts, unique talents, skills, whether they're writers, actors, performers, mothers, whatever it is, you know, everybody's got something they should be doing on this planet. And I feel that if we just listen to our hearts and not our heads, we're going to find our destiny. We're going to experience our dreams, whatever you want to call it, and live an amazing life. But most people are scared. Most people are fearful about listening to this and, 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 and stepping forward into the life that they really should be living. Yes. Because the ego gets in the way. See, we've all got an identity. I'm Jerry, I'm 40 years old, I've got two children, I've got a girlfriend. If any of that changes, the ego gets scared. But some of these things sometimes have to change. But you've got to be willing to surrender to the frequency, to the flow of the universe and let it guide you down the river of life to the place that you want to go to or where you're supposed to go to. And, 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 and a lot of the time, we don't even know where we're going. And, and, and we travel into the unknown and that's what's scary for most people. But if we can kind of just kick back and just trust, the universe will deliver to us what it is we're supposed to be doing, your destiny, your purpose, whatever you want to call it. That's my take on it. Yeah, all right. That's, uh, energetically, do you think like, like <coughs> for people, it's possible that they are, they're actually like linked by like some kind of uh, energetic thread or bond and then that may allow these two people to one day come together even if they're on opposite sides of the world? Do you believe in stuff like that? Absolutely, 100%. Every single one of us is connected by a fabric, by a universal substance, energy, light, frequency, codes, vibration, whatever you want to call it. We're all connected. And when you're talking about two people, it could be in a business relationship, a personal relationship, um, friends that come together, however it is, we're souls underneath these physical bodies. This physicalness is just a small aspect of what we are. Yeah. You know, we're spirits, we're souls, we're vibration, again, we're frequency. And we, ha we are having multiple experiences right now in other realities, which may be quite difficult for some people to get their head around. And again, I didn't used to believe in any of this stuff, but at the start of my spiritual journey, I found a really awesome teacher and she took me into multiple parallel realities or past lives. I went into hundreds and experienced the lives that my soul was living in those realities. And what I've come to realize is that there's no time. There's no future, there's no past. Everything is now. So all of these experiences that our souls are living are happening simultaneously in this kind of present now space on other frequencies. So right here in this space right now, you and I are having a chat, there's a camera, okay? We're talking to, to, your, to, your, to your followers, to the people that watch your videos. Right. We're talking amongst ourselves. But in this space right now, there's other worlds and other, other realities happening. Like over here, there's a little girl right now in a field, okay, because I can see her happening in another reality. Right. So there's all of this stuff happening, but because it's on a different vibrational frequency, we're not tuned into that. So most people can't see that, but it's happening. And there's multiple other layers all in the same space, if that makes sense. Yeah, that gets to my actual final question which I think is a big question for a lot of um, Chinese-speaking viewers. Chinese are really big into Zen, so it's kind of like an understanding thing in a, a logical, discriminating manner. So a lot of things that they that take imagination to reach, they find it just imagination. So I was following some of your meditations, and there's a lot of visualization that goes into it. Now, how does the practitioner know that it's not merely imagination, but what they're doing is actually real and tangible? It's a great question. Okay, the way, the way I, would, I, I would answer this question is to give you an example. Okay, before I started Star Magic, when I was being introduced to healing, I was living in New Zealand, and a friend of mine had a serious car accident. And her partner phoned up and said, Jerry, can you help? And I was like, well, how am I going to help? I'm in New Zealand, you're in England, we're around the other side of the world, there's nothing I can do. Yeah. But my intuition was saying, Jerry, go and lie on the bed, get some crystals, put the crystals on your chakras and just lie down. 
So I got these crystals, I put them on my chakras, I went and lay down on the bed, and all of a sudden I was inside this lady's hospital room. And all of this light started pouring out of my hands, and I started putting her body back together. And the doctors had said to her, you know, you're in a bad way. You might not ever walk again. You're probably not going to walk again, and you're going to be in hospital for at least a year. So every day I was doing this for about two weeks, going into a hospital room. You know, I, I, it was like I was really in there. And I was putting her body back together. Now, she walked out of hospital in 12 weeks, and the doctors were really astounded. And I was thinking to myself, did I do something? Didn't I do something? Is this my imagination just playing tricks on me? Right. But then she came out of hospital, she phoned me up, and she said, Jerry, I woke up one night, I looked at the side of my bed and said, what are you doing here? She saw me inside her hospital room. And for me, this was the turning point that made me realize that what happens inside of your mind is reality. Imagination is reality, happening in another quantum space. But as we grow up as kids, we, we go to school and they're like, you know, draw this picture, imagine this, imagine that. So you're drawing all these pictures and thinking you're making them up. It's like an invention. There are no inventions. All that's happening is someone's tapping into another reality somewhere else and bringing forth that information. It actually exists somewhere else. There is nothing that you can make up. There is no such thing really as imagination in terms of making stuff up with it. It's just reality. That is imagination. Yeah, I hear that. I've, uh, I'm really big into the color orange. Yeah. And uh, it's because I had a dream of a Hindu god, Hanuman. He came to me and he touched me like right here. And he filled me with this intense energy, and I was I was freaking out actually. And I was like, oh, I gotta wake up. This is in know? a dream, yeah. In a dream. Yeah. So I woke up, was covered in this energy, like awake. The same energy that was in the dream was as I woke up, it was still there, and I was tingling, and it was it was driving me nuts. It was too much. I couldn't handle it, right? Since then, though, which which is amazing, is whenever I see the color orange, I didn't know though Hanuman's aura is orange. Like, and I went to it, like, really good things happened. Like, I went to uh, Mysore to see Sri Ganapati Satchidananda. He has the biggest Hanuman temple, right, in India. And, like, immediately, movie come. Like, I, I'm trying to find a place to live, and I'm looking, like, you know, I'm swiping, and I see this place with an orange wall, and then I get this beautiful place on a mountain, and then, like, big river and it's like nice ice cold river even in the hot summer of Taiwan it's still ice cold all the time it's amazing and the rent was like it was really cheap and the parking spot was free and it was close to Taipei City I couldn't believe it like it was but really I do see uh, something going on that is not really explainable logically and I think the word Zen is, is, is a good word because for me Zen means peace it means stillness, it means bliss, you know, coming into that state of Zen. And I feel if people can just be still, they get to have an opportunity to access what you're talking about. What a lot of people are trying to do is to find this stuff. They're searching for this stuff. But actually, there's nothing to search for. We make it far too complicated. This spiritual journey um, is an easy process if you just allow yourself to be still and quiet, close your eyes, meditate, and you don't even really necessarily need to journey anywhere. You can just come into your heart, be still, and just feel. Just start to feel your body, connect with your hands, connect with your elbows, you know, connect with your stomach, your knees, feel yourself, and just feel the vibration inside of your own body. And don't expect anything. And just by being in that kind of still, zen, peaceful state, it's like a portal opens up and then you can travel through that portal and you get access to the whole universe. Yeah. And it's inside you. That's really awesome. So thank you very much. I'm glad I could have this conversation thank with you. Thank you, brother. Yeah. This is the book you guys want to get. It's Star Magic. They read the books backwards here. Yeah, I figured that out when I got my copy. I was like, that's yeah. cool, man. Back to front. There you go, brother. All right. And I got another small gift for you. This is... Uh, Sri Ganapati Sachinananda is like, he's really into meditational music, okay. like healing music. So I just brought you a, a CD. Amazing, man. You know, you Thank can you so to much. It. If you like it, like Thank you. the vibration is good, share it with other people. Because Certainly will, man. I think he's awesome.
I also Thanks, think bro. you're awesome. I'll share this with lots of people. Thank you.